Hello, my friends. Welcome, welcome to our class for today. We are going to be taking a look at the flow of project documents. To help you as you prepare for your exam, I know lots of you have looked at page 89 in PMBOK 6 or that page in Process Groups or Practice Guide, and you're wondering, how do I navigate this thing? There's so many documents. Well, I want to give you some order, some structure as to how you look at these documents. So we can break down the flow of documents like this. Things that happen pre-project authorization. Okay. And this starts off with two documents. One is called the business case. The business case makes a case for the project and it shows you why the project should be in existence. That's the first document. The second document pre-project authorization is called the benefits management plan. And the benefits management plan catalogs the benefits that you expect from the project and throughout the life of the project, that benefits register is updated as relevant. And even beyond the life of the project, the benefits register, or benefits management plan is updated. It's updated to reflect the accomplishments of those benefits. So that's pre-project authorization. Okay. Now, once the authorization has taken place, they are things that you get from initiating the project. So again, we have another section initiating the project. Oh, we can just say initiating. You already know it's for a project. So what you get from initiating is a project charter and also an assumption log, a log of assumptions and constraints. The other thing you get from initiating is the stakeholder register, which catalogs your stakeholders and the major things they are seeking, their level of power and influence and interest and things like that. And that's initiating. Then we go into planning. And planning is quite a beast. In fact, majority of the project documents that we talk about are from the planning process group. So in planning, let's start off down here. The first thing that's often talked about is the project management plan. You got to understand the dynamic here. The project management plan at first is skeletal. It is not fleshed out. It's not fully developed at this point. At this point, you're starting off with a skeletal plan that documents things of commonality like configuration and change. So in planning, you have a project management plan but you got to remember in this project management plan there are several subsidiary plans okay now we're going to go really deep into all of these subsidiary plans but i want you to think about them by knowledge area Okay, so we're going to start off with the scope knowledge area. Scope. In scope, or actually, let's start off with integration to make things clearer for people who have not studied this topic. In integration, you have your change management plan and your configuration management plan. Now, what is a change management plan? It guides how to manage changes on the project to documents and plans and 
other things, but the configuration management plan deals with configurable items such as artifacts that have been deemed configurable and needs to pass through version control. So you need to be thinking about version control for not just documents, but drawings, for example, and even items such as data uh, configurations and hardware configurations and things like that. Next, we go into scope. And in scope, we have a scope management plan, which guides us on how we're going to manage scope. We also, from scope, have a requirements management plan, which guides us on how we are going to collect the requirements and manage them from cradle to grave. And then in the process known as collect requirements, we have a we have our requirements management plan being used. Uh, but at this point in the planning section, we don't include the other things we get from collect requirements and so on. Instead, we jump to create WBS and define scope. And that's where we have our scope baseline. And your scope baseline contains your scope statement, your WBS, and your WBS dictionary. Now, you got to remember that the scope statement is a document that defines inclusions and exclusions and a detailed deliverable description. And sometimes even the grounds for accepting that deliverable, the criteria. Okay, so remember, we're talking traditional project management now. The WBS comes from Create WBS along with a WBS dictionary. So from scope, we have these components that are part of the project management plan. In schedule, we have our schedule management plan, and we have our schedule baseline. Now your schedule baseline is a version of the schedule that has been approved by management. It's a snapshot in time. So anytime you wanna check team progress, you go back to the baseline. This is different from the schedule, the project schedule, which is a living, breathing document that is updated regularly throughout the project. Next, we have cost. Again, we have a cost management plan, and then we have a cost baseline. The cost baseline is your snapshot of the budget that is approved, it contains all of the projected costs, the estimates for the tasks and the contingency amounts. It does not contain management reserves though. So you got to keep that in mind. So that's it for the first four. Let's see, if we can squeeze one more in here. Let's go ahead and put in the quality aspect. So we have quality management, put this closer. So in quality management, we have our quality management plan. That's pretty much it. Okay. Now, moving on to the final five, because there are 10 areas of knowledge, right? And we are done with the first five. So going on to resource management, which is next, we have our resource management plan. And going on to communications, which is next, we have a communications management plan. Going into risk, we have a risk management plan. Going into procurement, we have a procurement management plan. 
And finally, going into stakeholder, we have a stakeholder engagement plan. And those are the major components that you would find in a project management plan. We also have mention of a performance measurement baseline, which combines cost, schedule, and scope. In no particular order, scope, schedule, cost, if you will. And those are the components in your project management plan. But you do need to recall that these are not the only things that we create in planning. There's some other things that fall outside of the plan. And we're going to take a look at some of those. So still in planning, let's examine what else we get. Thinking about all of the documentation generated in planning. Okay, so we'll just refer to these as documents, project documents. Okay. So, as usual, the best way to organize your thoughts is by knowledge area. When you think about integration under planning, is there anything you get that is not listed here? And the answer would be no. For scope, though, there are some things, documents, that were not listed in the first section. And these are things like your requirements documentation and your requirements traceability matrix. So we'll put those here. Requirements, traceability, matrix, and going into schedule, there are things such as an activity list, activity attributes, and the milestone list. Remember the activity list is just a list of activities. The activity attributes further defines what the activities are, characteristics of the activities. The milestone list is a list of key events and accomplishments that we're seeking to accomplish. We also have a project schedule network diagram that we get from sequencing the activities. And then we also have duration estimates and basis of estimates, which we call BOEs from the estimating of the durations. And then in the development of the schedule, we have our project schedule, which I mentioned, but was not part of the project management plan. We have things like scheduled data and we have project calendars. Okay, and you can see a lot of the documentation is heavy around these schedule, cost and scope. Going on to cost, we have our cost estimates. I'll put these uh, on the cost as well, the basis of estimates. We also have our project funding requirements. And moving into quality, we have quality metrics. Moving into the next five. Let's move this aside. We're going into resources now. Moving into resource management, we have 
what we refer to as uh, team charter. We have uh, uh, resource breakdown structure. We also have two plans I want to call out, or I should say two pieces of documents after we have acquired our resources. So we have project team assignments and we have physical resource assignments. So let's talk about these. Your team charter is a document that identifies good behaviors, bad behaviors, expected behaviors of the team, ground rules and things of that nature, resource breakdown structure breaks down the resources by type, category, so that you've got a visual of that. You can account for anything missing. It includes both physical and human. Project team assignments refers to paperwork to show assignment of people, physical resource assignments, paperwork to show assignments of the team of, of the physical resources, I beg your pardon, such as servers and backhoes and lorries and trucks and material resources. Something else we have under resource management is enterprise environmental factors updates. And this could be looked at as employee records and skills, employee and skills records, things like that. Then we go into communications. There's not a whole lot extra. What you do have here is project communications, which are memos and paperwork that have been documented. This could also include the mention of ad hoc project reports. So we're talking about memos and ad hoc reports that you might create for management on demand. Then we move into risk. In risk management, we have a risk register, which documents all our risks and the details about them. And we have our risk report. You gotta remember that the risk report is the state of the union regarding risk on the project. So it's a report that goes straight to the key big ticket things. This is not the detail you have in your register. You gotta remember that. All right, moving on, we got uh, procurements. And boy, oh boy, have we got a lot of procurement documentation here. We have a procurement strategy. We have independent cost estimates. We have source selection criteria. And we have make or buy decisions as a result of our make or buy analysis. We also work on bid documents. Okay. So let's see what else. Procurement. We could also have a procurement statement of work. And bear in mind, this is just planning, my friends. We've been on planning for going to 15 minutes straight. All right, let's round this up with stakeholder. And to finish this off, the other things that you get from stakeholder, to be perfectly honest, are non-existent. The only thing that I would mention here is your seam, which is more of a technique, and that's a stakeholder engagement assessment matrix. That is the only thing I would say is perhaps worthy of specific mention, but it is 
embedded in your stakeholder engagement plan. But nonetheless, not a bad mention. So my friends, as you can see, there is so much stuff that you need to know in planning. And you need to know the techniques and the tools that are used alongside these documents. Okay. Next, we'll go into executing. The executing process group. I'm going to put that up here for convenience. So let's talk about executing right up there in your head. And by the way, all of this is from memory. None of this is from looking at the book. So I really hope that you are able to digest it in this organic fashion. Maybe write it along with me if you haven't already started, right? So in executing, we start off with the lessons learned register. That's one of those at the top, right? In manage project knowledge, but maybe that's a bit premature because you actually have some stuff that we could put before that, right? So in direct to manage project work, we actually have the issue log, which comes first. And that's one of the things we think about first. So the issue log, and then we also have work performance data talked about here. And then that takes us to the next. So let's talk about this. The issue log is a log of issues, straightforward, right? Work performance data is your raw observations on the project that still need further processing in the monitoring and controlling aspect. The lessons learned register documents lessons that you've learned on the project, things that went well, things that didn't go so well. And then we jump all the way from scope down to quality, because remember, there is nothing in executing within scope, schedule, and cost. So in the aspect of quality, if I was going to break them down again by area, we have a quality report, and then we have TED, test, and evaluation documents. And you want to prepare your TED in managed quality. So these are from managed quality. Then we get into resources. And under resources, we actually have something that I probably prematurely put into planning. Actually, these, I'm going to take these because these are really more from executing. So follow my train of thought here in taking project team assignments and physical resource assignments, those are actually not planning because when you assign resources, that is executing. So this is the rightful home for those. Okay, so sorry about that mix up. Uh, and the same thing for communications. Again, these, these are documents, but the project communications they actually are more in executing. So a little bit of cobweb cleaning here. Let's go ahead and put this under its rightful home in communications. So I prematurely put these here. It is such a maze of stuff. You know, when you're thinking page 89, there's a tendency for them to get lost in translation if you're not keeping a firm eye on them. So remember, all of this is from memory. So we've got stuff in communications, but let me go back and think, is there anything in communications that happens in planning that I haven't captured? And the answer is there's actually not. So we actually have a blank space here beyond the communications management plan. There's actually nothing, no other document in communications. So that's a difference compared to the other areas. All right. Um, in terms of risk, we have updates to the risk register, which are worthy of mention. Uh, so we have some risk register updates. 
And that is just updating the register with the actions that you've decided to take or the actions that are underway, okay? All right, then we're gonna move on from executing to monitoring and controlling. Uh, in monitoring and controlling, this is where we get reports, okay? Um, although there is an exception to quality, right? There is an exception. Um, and there's an exception in risk. Yeah, the risk report is actually, the beginnings of it is from identified risks. So that is that is correct. Um, in terms of monitoring and controlling, let's go ahead and put this here. Monitoring and controlling. I'm running out of space. Monitoring and controlling. We have some things that are worthy of mention. Let's go ahead and put that here. Change that color if we can. All right, monitoring and controlling Again, you got to think in knowledge area terms to help you. So if you're thinking in knowledge areas, integration, I should actually put integration in this executing one as well so that you know what we're talking about here. So this is integration. Okay. All right, monitoring and controlling. We have integration, and in integration, we have work performance reports from monitor and control project work. We have change log from performing a greater change control. We have approved change requests from the same place. From scope, we have uh, verif well, verified deliverables. You could look at it as some sort of documentation, I guess. Verified deliverables. I know it's split in hairs. In schedule, we have... Uh, what do we have? Uh, let's see. Um, no, it's a similar thing. We have uh, schedule forecasts, and then we have cost forecasts. Schedule forecasts and cost forecasts. So, Schedule forecasts and cost forecasts. There is so much content, my friends. It takes some, quite a lot of remembering. Okay. So just remember the verified deliverables is really more like the documentation to support that the deliverable has been accepted by the customer. We have cost forecasts and from quality, we have quality control measurements uh, from resources. As I said, there's some things that we should probably take from there anything we need to take from quality? Not really. So we're going to keep here open. There's nothing there. Communications, there's nothing. Um, risk, there's really nothing, to be honest. And procurements, we do have closed procurements from here. And we have some sort of updates to procurement documentation that does exist. And from, to be quite honest, there's nothing from a stakeholder. So we're actually done. 
We're actually done. Um, the only thing I should tweak again is when it comes to the resources, the enterprise environmental factors updates, the employee records that I mentioned, those would actually fall more under the execution. So let's just put these in here. Okay, so a little bit of cleanup. And we move this down. And I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, do feel free to drop them in the comments. Okay. So I hope you're following along. And I hope, you know, the essence of this is to go over all these very nebulous sounding documents and ask yourself, okay, do I know what this means? Do I know how it relates to project management? That needs to be the question. All right, let's go ahead and uh, tidy this up and go into closing. And then we are gonna be done. And closing, the good news, we only have one. One, just one single output. Okay. In closing, the only document that we have is a report. So let's go ahead and put it in here. Closing. Closing. Okay. And in closing, this final thing is known as final report. That's it. Final report. And to be quite honest, I mean, there's something else called a final product service or result transition, which would be paperwork showing the transition of the deliverable or documenting that it's been delivered to the client. But let's just put our final report here and be done. Okay. I think we've done more than enough to help you cross that finish line in your prep to become certified, okay? Going through this with a fine tooth comb is going to help you beyond a lot of the videos that don't call your attention to the specifics, right? There are many videos that just cover things at too high a level that you don't really know that you don't know stuff. But I'm hoping this video helps you, okay? So one more time. Before we round up, so we have the work that we did in initiating. Over here, we have pre-project authorization, which is this. We have the planning piece, which is all this. The executing piece the monitoring and controlling piece, and closing, just the final report. Final report. All right. I hope this helps you see how these documents are generated and the logic behind them. If you've got any questions, again, put them in the comments. See you in the next video. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Bye for now.